Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my January 2021 webinar. And most importantly, Happy New Year. Okay. I am back here in the studio live uh, to start off this year. Um, as some of you may know, I just had a baby girl, and that's the reason I was not doing the webinar live for the last couple of months, but here I am again. And please excuse my tired eyes, but my baby loves to party at night, so you know what that means for me. Anyway, it's good to be back here. Thank you for joining me. Um, we have some really good material for you this year. Uh, for those of you joining me for the first time, let me introduce myself. My name's Tashia Rasul. I'm an attorney and a partner here at Lois Law Firm, where we uh, practice the defense of uh, workers' compensation claims in New York. I handle exclusively uh, workers' compensation claims that arise out of construction accidents. I also oversee a team that handles um, only construction workers' compensation claims here at Lois. Um, Based on what I know, that's very unique to our firm and the workers' compensation industry, and it allows us to be very focused and experienced in the area, and that's one of the reasons. We also have a construction claims handbook, which came out last year. Um, the image I have here is a 2020 image. I'm sorry, I didn't get the 2021 image here, but there is a 2021 book, so ask me for a copy. I can send you a hard copy. We also have a PDF copy. All right. So let's get into it. What will we discuss today? We're going to talk about the benefits of coordination between the workers' compensation claim and the general liability claim that arises out of a, uh, a construction work accident. We'll talk about tactics that benefit the employer, reduction of litigation costs, avoiding collateral estoppel, and very importantly, reaching global settlement. And don't forget, I'm live here. You can ask questions, and I will provide answers at the end of the webinar. This is the uh, this is what it looks like. You can type your questions into the box, and I'll see them. Hopefully, I remember how to do this. Um, all right, so let's get into it. The big question: Why? Why do we need coordination between workers' compensation and general liability claims? Let's first talk about the three C's. The claims that we're talking about are the uh, catastrophic, uh, complex, and the costly claims, right? These are the ones that our clients fear the most because they cost so much money, the exposure is so high. And it's really because it's on a construction site and um, they oftentimes involve a fall from height, which causes more uh, severe injuries. Um, there are two claims in two courts different rules that we should be aware of. So the workers' compensation claim is held in administrative court before the workers' compensation board. And um, the, uh, the, the general liability claim is regular uh, civil court. So there are two claims and two courts that operate differently. And this is why it's important for us to have some coordination between the two. And finally, there should be one solid protocol for coordination. So this is why um, we're doing this webinar. We're going to go through real life examples, case laws. I'll, I'll explain how these tactics work, um, how we can save costs and reduce overall exposure. And also this year, I'm going to do a focus on Burns and Kelly. It's important that we understand the um, uh, the 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 value or the importance of Burns and Kelly and how to calculate it. In one of my webinars last year, I just briefly went over how it works, but in an upcoming webinar, I'm going to actually crunch the numbers for you. And in this regard, if there's any particular topic you'd like to uh, see me cover throughout the next 12 months, feel free to send me an email and let me know, and I'll see how I can uh, work it into one of the webinars. All right. So let's talk tactics. The workers' compensation claim and the general liability claim, they move at different paces. The workers' compensation claim is very, very, very quick moving. It's fast. Uh, a workers' compensation claim can go from accident to trial within as little as 30 days. On the other hand, 
the workers' compensation claim, when it ends in like a year and a half or two years, that's when the general liability claim is starting. And this is why it's important to, uh, to understand the difference because the information that you gather, all of the evidence that you, get, uh, you gather in the workers' compensation claim, all of the findings made in the workers' compensation claim can impact the general liability claim, which is starting toward the end of the workers' comp claim. So it's very important to start off the workers' comp claim on the right foot, to start the investigation right away, to get the evidence all in place, so as to build up uh, um, whatever you need for the general liability claim to share it with general liability counsel, and hopefully they can use it to reduce their exposure. Because let's face it, in the workers' compensation side, the exposure can be a couple hundred thousand dollars. I know that's a lot, but on the general liability side, they can be millions and millions of dollars. And even if we can save our client $1 million by using information from the workers' compensation claim, that's a lot, a, a lot of savings to our clients. Um, there's also differences in timelines and dis disclosure rules. Uh, like I mentioned, the workers' comp claim, it can go from the beginning to, from the day of the accident to a trial within 30 days. It can conclude within a year. Disclosure rules are different. They're more relaxed in workers' compensation claims. Uh, the rules of evidence don't quite apply, like the federal rules of evidence. Um, a classic example is with, uh, with regards to surveillance videos in workers' compensation claim. Those are, um, if you obtain covert surveillance of a claimant, you're not obligated to disclose it until uh, after you decide that you want to. Um, if you don't want to disclose it, you don't have to. However, on the general liability side, once the attorneys have knowledge of it and they know about it, uh, they have to disclose it. So that's, that's one example of the big difference between the disclosure rules between workers' comp and general liability. Um, there's also disparities in claimants, counsel, domain competence, and motivation. So generally, the workers' compensation attorney for the claimant is different from the general liability attorney. However, I will tell you, we are seeing more and more of the GL firms handling workers' compensation claims. And we can very well use this to our advantage because they do not quite know the ins and outs of how the workers' comp claim works. Um, so we do have to focus on that. Their motivation is usually for global settlement, they want to prevent uh, fraud findings. They get so scared when they hear about fraud findings because that impacts their exposure. And they are fighting more to um, you know, increase the exposure on their end. Whereas in a regular workers' compensation claim where there's not a general liability claim, it's really just the claimant's workers' comp attorney trying to get their fee, trying to get a little settlement out of it and just move on. And because of this, we've seen the, the workers' comp claims that arise out of a construction accident, they tend to drag on more. This is because the GL claim is usually, um, it takes longer to finish, and they're trying to add on body parts and do more surgeries and just overall increase the exposure. And finally, the biggest tactic of all, create jeopardy. Unfortunately, the workers' compensation system in New York is favored in, 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 in the claimant's favor. However, our goal, and this is what we do here every day at Lois, is to just create jeopardy in the case, right? There are lots of good wins, win often, but I think the ultimate goal is to really create jeopardy. And how do we create jeopardy? We use the information, any information we can get from the general liability side to present it in a workers' compensation claim. For example, um, if it's a public entity and there was a 50-H hearing or even a regular deposition, we can use that transcript in the workers' compensation claim if we're trying to contest the mechanism of injury when the claimant's claiming additional body part or the need for a surgery or anything that would um, uh, uh, impact his credibility on the workers' compensation side. So we definitely use the information we get from the GL claim to create jeopardy in the workers' compensation claim. All right, why else do we need to coordinate? Why is coordination uh, important? We can save some money. We can save a lot of money. I'll tell you, last year was a really big year for a lot of my clients. I've seen a lot of global settlements. 
and millions of dollars in savings. And it's really because we worked the workers' compensation claim, um, started with the investigation, gathered all the evidence, and shared the same with General Liability Council, which forced the claimant to do a global settlement, close out both claims at reasonable prices. Um, so we can save some money when we collaborate. It also reduces litigation costs, right? Because we don't have to be doing investigation on both sides of, of, of um, the claim, both the workers' comp and GL. We don't have to be um, issuing subpoenas on both sides. We can use that information uh, when it's done on one side or the other. Um, and this also goes to avoiding duplicative efforts also. Uh, so it's, it's you know, I think by us um, sharing the information we have, working with each other, we can definitely save the, the, the client some money. All right, collateral estoppel. Now this is a legal concept and it's not a very uh, well known or well understood concept but we've seen a couple of successes last year um, and we're definitely following through and uh, expanding the way we address uh, or we tee up a case to potentially um, invoke collateral estoppel on the general liability side. So what it means is you're using findings in the workers' compensation claim to benefit the general liability or the third party claim. Also, so I know I've been using the terminology general liability in claim, but it's the same as the third party action that we're all so uh, familiar with. Um, so an example of collateral estoppel would be if a body part, let's say the shoulder is disallowed in the workers' compensation claim, the basis being it's not uh, work-related or causally related, you can use that, the general liability attorney can use that in their claim to, uh, to, to, to argue that you know, this issue has been decided in the workers' compensation side, it's not work-related, the shoulder shouldn't be compensated in the general liability claim. Um, this is something that the attorneys need to focus on. It's really the attorney's job to keep an eye out for all legal issues. And this is why it's important to develop all legal issues in the workers' compensation side um, early on, because last year there was new case law that came out that says that even though there was a section 32 between the employer and the claimant, the record was never developed, meaning there wasn't an actual um, litigation and an actual finding by the workers' compensation judge that uh, uh, as to who the proper employer was. So on the general liability side, they were still able to litigate that issue. So just a reminder, it has to be litigated and there must be a decision on the issue. So when we're thinking about doing a potential settlement of only the workers' compensation claim, one reason we don't favor closing out only the comp claim and leaving the general liability one open. Um, but if we have to, we should consider whether all the legal issues have been addressed. And if they have not yet been addressed, how they can potentially impact the general liability claim and whether we should prolong the settlement a little more to resolve the issues um, so it can help other GL claim. It's really a balancing act. It's something your attorney can walk you through and um, you know, ask questions about collateral estoppel when you're talking to your attorneys. Okay, so global settlement. And I'm not talking about global settlements in terms of uh, both indemnity and medical, uh, but I'm talking about closing out both the workers' compensation and the general liability claim. So it's full and final settlement. You're closing it all out. You're getting rid of this claimant. Just go away, bye-bye, leave us alone. Um, it's all happening at the same time. The attorney, your defense attorney, should be drawing up the documents. Um, the Section 32 with the consent letter at the same time when the general liability side is doing their settlement agreement and release. And, um, you know, you're, you're just... Uh, in that regard, a lot of the Section 32s are usually a $0 Section 32, and we're using the workers' compensation lien as leverage for closing out a Section 32 uh, with no new money moving. So the way this works is, let's just say there's a $50,000 workers' compensation lien on the third party slash general liability claim. Um, the client might decide to do a waiver or a partial waiver of the lien, 
in exchange for a zero dollar section 32 meaning we're going to say to the claimant we're not going to recover the lien you can get all the money on the general liability side but we're not going to pay you anything else on the workers compensation side either majority of the times uh, it works once in a while the claimants are hesitant to do that because they want to leave the medicals open for whatever reason or their attorneys who are not collaborating with their general liability attorneys um, are not getting a fee and it creates a little bit of an issue in that regard. However, most of the time, global settlements, they go through very smoothly. The claimants want to do them. The attorneys want to do them. But, oops, they're generally, the issue is generally not raised unless we raise it because a lot of times the workers' compensation attorneys are interested in closing out only their claim and um, <clears throat> the uh the general liability attorney is interested in clo closing out only their claim so we as the workers comp defense attorneys at least this is what we do here at lois said hey hey client why don't we try to do a global settlement we can do a zero dollar section 32 cut off the workers compensation claim right away no more money is moving we can negotiate the lien and you end up saving probably hundreds of thousands of dollars on the workers comp in exchange for giving the claimant, let's say, a $50,000 lien waiver on the general liability claim. All right, so this is um, this is this is a really big reason why we collaborate. Uh, we've seen over and over for the past uh, several years, our clients are moving towards more global settlements, and we've seen, I'm not even kidding, millions of dollars of savings on both the general liability and the workers' comp side uh, combined. All right, so that was just my overview of what we're gonna talk about this year. The focus of the webinar is going to be collaboration between the workers' compensation and the general liability claims. Now, I've been doing this for several years now, um, the, the focus on construction claims. Uh, my team's been doing it. We've seen lots and lots of different kinds of cases different values, we've seen lots of fraudulent cases, we've seen uh, legitimate cases that, um, you know, even though there are severe injuries, there are ways we can curb exposure. And it really boils down to us communicating with a general liability attorney. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go through, you know, the, the wrap of policies and the, the general client and how it works and to set up your uh, set up your team and how to contact your team and how to communicate with your team and the issues and the questions you should be asking and the evidence you should be getting, the questions you should be asking your attorney, the things your attorney should be saying to you. If they're not saying certain things to you, then I think you need to give me a call um, because as your workers' comp defense attorney, uh, there are certain things they should be focusing on in these construction claims. Um, this year, we're going to take uh, a look also at risk reduction transfer schemes. Like I said, we're going to talk about the wrap-ups, the OSIPs and the CSIPs. The majority of the construction claims in New York are under a wrap-up policy. Um, we're going to go through insurance policy and coverage issues. We see this all the time. The Workers' Compensation Board is not very versed. In this, um, in this area, we have been educating them on what to wrap up, how to read an insurance policy. It's, it's, it is kind of sad that, you know, some of the judges don't even know how to read an insurance policy or adversaries don't even know how to do it. Um, but coverage issues is something that comes up a lot in construction claims. And our goal is to get your client out of it. So I'll go over that. Um, like I said earlier on, there's going to be a focus on Kelly and Burns. This was actually a special request from one of you at the end of last year. Um, so I will be putting together that webinar. And I'll talk about uh, case law and real life examples of things we see here with Lois and the, thing, the cases my, my team's handling and the outcomes and, you know, the things that we learn um, ab about the board. We're going to share all of those with you this year. So once again, if you have any questions, um, type them into the box. If not, um, you can also email me at trasool at loisllc.com and I'll get back to you. 
but I hope you're going to join me for the rest of the year. If there's a particular question or a particular topic you want me to focus on, even if it's a general uh, workers' compensation topic, there is a way I can, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I can incorporate it into the construction webinar. Because remember, the construction uh, workers' compensation claims, they're workers' compensation claims, right? It's its just that they're um, so, so many more nuances and moving parts, and this is why we focus so heavily on how to handle them, how to defend them, and how to collaborate with GL. So even if it's a general workers' comp claim, you can... Um, workers comp claim question definitely send send me a proposed topic or uh, you know an idea and i'll work it into one of my webinars um all right so let's see if there are any questions i see a question from lee and okay all right good so lee asks can you include in kelly and burns the proper consent letter okay so if that's something um, you want me to focus on, Lee, I'm definitely going to, all right, your wish is my commands. I'm going to um, do, uh, I guess, an anatomy of a consent letter and how it should be done and all of the information that should be included in it. We do these all the time. They differ based on the circumstances. So you got it. I'll do it. Thank you for uh, giving me that idea. If there's any other ideas out there, let me know. I don't see any questions any other questions um so i guess i did a good job doing this overview i hope you're all still watching and didn't fall asleep on me today anyway so i'll see you guys here next month on february 1st um, for the next webinar again i'll be live here in the studio have a happy new year stay safe everyone and thanks for joining me